Good morning, guys. Okay, so actually it's barely morning. It's 11.50, but we slept in today, so it feels much earlier than it actually is. So I've got my water. Grab your coffee. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Tanya Johnson. I am the founder of Helping Hearts Homeschool, where I help everyday homeschooling moms navigate through the joys of homeschooling, but also the chaos, because homeschooling is not all rainbows and sunshine, as we all know. Um, so if you want more homeschooling content, go follow me on my Instagram. I will link it down in the comments. It is just Helping Hearts Homeschooler. Or you can check me out on YouTube. Same thing. It's majority of my YouTube channel is homeschool content or like daily devotions. Hi, Ruth. And obviously, if you're watching me on Facebook, um, I share a lot more just real life stuff on here. Um, a lot of devotions, a lot of just family stuff, I guess. So I guess that's the best way to put it. And then I also share how to make money from social media. If you are interested in that concept, check out my stories. I always give daily tips and, you know, what I'm doing to monetize Facebook and Instagram both. So, hi. So, let's get going. So, last night at church, our pastor said something that wasn't new, but it was very much a good reminder. And he said, now he said it a little bit more eloquently than I'm going to say it, but basically truth is truth regardless of who said it. And his point was we get so caught up in canceling and like discrediting people that we don't absorb the truth that they're telling us. We don't absorb the truth that God has sent through them. Forgot to put lip gloss on. I hate the feeling of not having lip gloss on my lips. So, sorry. Um, but someone will say something that has a lot of truth. Literally, like, if it's in the Bible, it's truth. It doesn't matter who delivers it to you. It's a biblical truth. But because they've done something in their life that we don't agree with, or they've said something else that we don't agree with, we completely cancel them because we live in cancel culture, right? We live in a culture that says, if I don't agree with you 100%, I can't learn anything from you. And that is the dumbest thing that you could probably say. Okay, I'm just going to throw it out there. Um... I have notes here because I don't want to like go crazy with y'all. Um, oh, but the biggest, okay, the best parenting tip I ever got was, and this was before I ever had kids. The best parenting tip I ever got was to make sure my daughter had a good relationship with God. A relationship above all else would help her become a productive citizen and follow God the rest of her life and all the things that we hope as a parent. Now, since then... When the lady, the lady told me this, her kids were five and seven. They're now teenagers. And they're honestly teenagers that are doing very wicked things. Um, but she herself is always on Facebook posting and she just slowly moved away from God. It wasn't one big thing. It just kind of, it happens. And that's why we always say guard yourself because it, it happens with a thought that turns into a small action and it snowballs into, okay, I'm so far from living for God that it's not even funny. Um, one of her, her teenage daughter is 15 now, just announced that she was pregnant. She herself, the mom, is always on Facebook talking about the parties that she's going to and she's drinking all the time and what different guy she's out with. I could easily say, oh, well, obviously all the advice you've ever given me is bad. But it's not because, again, building that, helping your child build that relationship with God, that was not something this lady came up with. It was the truth from the Bible. Does that make sense? So often we throw out the baby with the bathwater, so to speak. We look at something and we're like, oh, well, because I don't like this, this, and this about you, then everything that you said is false. Instead of taking each individual thing, holding it to the Bible and saying, okay, is this truth or is it not truth? Um, and guys, churches are guilty of this as well. I have been in so many churches we're church leadership. And guys, I go to an independent Baptist church. I'm not Baptist. I'm a Biblicist. I believe what the Bible says. That is it. Too many churches insert their own things and try to call them Bible, which is not the case. But I do go to a Baptist church because that is in our area, the closest thing I've found to actually living what the Bible says. Um, and that's not to say they're perfect, but that's the closest thing I found. So I have visited many, many churches over the last 15, 15, 16 years. Um, and I've been to churches where they won't allow 
certain music in their church. And I'm not talking good or bad. I'm talking like there it'll there'll be a song that is biblically sound, an amazing song, but because the author didn't live exactly like church leadership shop thought they should live, they won't allow that song in their church. And they do it over and over and over again. And that's the same with they won't read books by people who didn't live exactly how they want them to live. And the hypocrisy is kind of glaring, but at the same time, it's church leadership. What are you going to do about it? Um, I literally remember talking to a pastor about a certain um, lady who writes songs, and she is like an amazing songwriter. She's an amazing Christian, but she's not Baptist. And he says, oh, we don't sing her music here because she's not Baptist. She's non-denominational. And we're thinking like, so you're telling me that because they minister to everybody versus just your little box of a religion, that you're going to discredit her and not let her music bless your people? Like, shame on you, sir. Shame on you. And, but again, not my place, not my church, right? Like, we visit different churches. We move on for a reason. Um... And it's one of those things that we get so caught up in our own traditions. And, and I'm talking we as a church. We've, do, we've always done it this way, so we're always going to do it this way. We blindly follow tradition instead of making the changes necessary to keep our church alive. And again, this same pastor, I remember him telling me, oh, well, there's a song that I really love and I think it would be a blessing to our people. But because so-and-so sings it and he's not exactly basically up to our standards, what we think he should be doing... We don't allow any of his music in our church. And I'm like, you're so close to being self-aware. You're so close. And you just kind of laugh about it. And so it's literally like God's here. Church leadership is here. God's like, your music sounds awesome. Like, it's pretty. It's very, it has very good vocal technique. But I'm not in it because you pushed me out so many times. You're so consumed with your tradition and your style and what you think it should sound like that I come across, I'm like, hey, this this music is truth. Here's a song that would bless your people. And you're like, ah, no thanks, God. It doesn't fit inside my box. I'm sorry. I don't want anything to do with it. And God's just kind of on the outside looking in like, I, I want to bless your people. I want to be in your church. I want to be in your music program. But... Because the person I am working through and sending the truth through, you don't like them. So you decide you're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Now, I get having standards. There are def there's definitely a time and a place. There's certain music that I don't think should be sung in a church. But when a song comes across your path and it's biblically sound, but you don't like the author, so you don't let it, you don't let it be a blessing to your people, you are literally blocking that blessing at that point because God has already brought it to you and you're just not letting it go through the door. So again, I rarely find anything that is new in a sermon because I've been studying the Bible. I went to the Bible college. I read self-help books. I do all the things I have for the last decade plus. But a lot of times something will be spoken like last night when he said truth is truth regardless of who said it. That reminds me of like, oh, that's that's really good. And I need that reminder of my own life because sometimes we as Christians start acting like that church who sticks their nose up at certain things because they're not good enough for them. How many times do we do that in our own lives? Because it's easy to look at a church and be like, oh, well, that's not biblical. But then we don't look at our own selves with that same light. We tend to have rose colored glasses on when we look at our own our own mistakes, right? Um, and I am very thankful to have a pastor who understands that God uses everybody, that he doesn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And he preaches truths like this of, hey, God might be sending a blessing or sending a nugget of truth to, through somebody that you may not agree with 100% on every standard that they have in their life. And that's okay. Now, does that to say my pastor isn't a hypocrite? No, he is. Because I am. Because you are. Every human being is a hypocrite in some area of life. But he tries to be very self-aware and he tries to be as, I guess, perfect as possible. No one can ever be perfect, right? But he does, I'm very thankful that he does try to 
be as non-hypocritical as possible, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, because let's be real. If we had to be perfect in order to be credible, we as humans, every single one of us, if that was a prerequisite to be able to, for God to use us to pass truth, pass truth on to somebody else, not one of us would have a leg to stand on. I sure as heck would not. Y'all that know my past, you know that. You know that no one would listen to any advice I gave if they judged me based on what I've done in the past. So, or even what I do today. Because I've had people tell me, oh, I love your homeschool content. Because that's, again, that's one of the biggest things that I teach on is homeschooling and parenting. But if they saw the behind the scenes, I screw up sometimes. There are times I don't take my own advice. Pastors do this. Music directors do this. Sunday school teachers do this. It's ludicrous just as much as it's ludicrous to throw out a piece of music because the author doesn't live quite up to the standards that you want them to. It's ludicrous to throw out a church because you see little spots of hypocrisy and now all of a sudden, oh, well, I don't go to church because they're full of hypocrites. So are you. You're the biggest hypocrite of all of them because you're judging God based on man. You won't go to church. You won't go to church and worship with other believers because they're not good enough for you. Do you want them to shine that same flashlight on you that you're shining on them? Probably not. I'm just going to say that. Um, Y'all, can you tell I'm passionate about this? Like, when he said this last night, I was like, how many times does God send me some nugget of truth, but because the messenger is not tied up in a little cute little bow like I want it to be, I'm like, eh, I'm not going to listen to that. Bye, Felicia. And God's like, you're an idiot. I am sending you truth. I'm sending you something that could speak to your, to your soul and change your life, but you are too blind. No, not blind. You're too stubborn to hear it because you don't like the package that it came in. So let me tell you all a quick little story and then I'm going to be done. But um, there is a lady that I've listened to her at homeschool conferences. She pops on on podcasts every once in a while. And guys, her parenting advice, not my style at all. I wouldn't say it's unbiblical. I think parts of it might be a little unbiblical, but not my style. Wouldn't take advice, parenting advice from this lady at all. Like you see her kids, just in general, I wouldn't take parenting advice from her. But she loves her husband. Anytime she does a marriage talk or gives marriage tips, they are spot on with the Bible. They've helped me so much. I've taken things and I've put it into practice and it's helped me become a better wife. Now, this was after I learned not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, there's a, a pastor that I never met personally, but I've heard a lot of his sermons. He was infamous for saying, everybody can be your teacher. You can learn something from everyone. I don't care if it's the homeless man on the street or the person who has six different Harvard degrees and is making a million dollars. You can learn something from everybody. So when I heard this lady's first marriage talk, instantly I was like, oh, I hate her parenting stuff. And then I had to remind myself, Tanya, you're not listening to her for parenting stuff. You're listening to her for marriage advice because she is spot on on that. I could easily say, well, I'm not going to listen to her at all because her parenting sucks. People could look at me and say, I'm not going to listen to her because I don't like her homeschool style. When I'm sharing truth that God has given me to share to people. There's so many pastors I could look at that I get nuggets of truth from every single week. Oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to listen to that pastor anymore because his music is a little bit too rocky for me. It's not my style. And God's like, okay, miss out on all those blessings. I don't care. This is where free will comes into play. And I think this is where we as Christians kind of stick our foot in our mouth because we pick and choose where we're going to let God bless us according to what the package looks like. So but duh. Yeah, so this is what I want to leave you with. Kind of all wrap it up into a little nice little bow, so to speak, is be open to God. Stop putting him in a box. God does not fit in your little box. Openly pray every single day that God sends someone across your path with a nugget of truth that you need to hear. And then you decide that you're not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You decide just because that truth is not wrapped up in a pretty little bow or fits inside your little box that you think religion should be, that you're not going to discredit it. Because truth is truth, regardless who said it. So, thank you all for tuning in. 
I know this was more of like a little sermonette than it was a teaching, but or it was a devotion, but it was just something that really spoke to me and spoke to my heart because I think it's something that is so prevalent with Christians today. And even just in general in our culture, again, we live in a canceled culture. Stop canceling people. Realize we're all hypocrites. We all have value to add. We all have things that should not be taken as a gra with a grain of salt. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps, and I will talk to you guys later.